to lecture series of engineering graphics and design myself ankur patel and today in this second session of engineering course we are going to discuss methods to construct an ellipse so today we will discuss four methods to construct an ellipse first is rectangle or oblong method second we will discuss ellipse in parallelogram third we will discuss concentric and circle method and then after lastly we will discuss arc of the circle method to draw an ellipse so let's start with the rectangle or oblong method so the given data is the major axis and minor axis of ellipse are 120 mm and 80 mm respectively construct the ellipse with rectangle or oblong method so the given data is uh, major axis 120 mm and minor axis 80 mm so let's say ab major axis equal to 120 mm and cd will be equal to 80 mm and which will be our minor axis so first of all draw major axis having length equal to 120 mm ab then after draw minor axis having length equal to 80 mm which be with the cd make sure that major axis and minor axis should be perpendicular bisector of each other so after drawing the major axis and minor axis we have to draw a rectangle containing point a c b and d so for that what we have to we have to draw lines parallel to minor axis that means parallel to cd from a and b and we have to draw lines parallel to major axis that means parallel to ab from c and d so draw lines you will get the rectangle having side length 120 mm and 80 mm so after drawing the rectangle the next step is we have to divide this length into equal number of divisions let's say that divide this length into four equal number of divisions so divide it into four equal parts 0 1 2 3 and 4 and as we have divided this length into four equal divisions or equal number of divisions we have to divide this length into four equal divisions also so divide this length into four equal number of divisions 0 so 1 2 3 and 4 So after dividing this line and this line into equal number of divisions, now connect this point to point C and draw lines. So one to C, two C, three C, draw lines. After drawing this line, now connect this point to D and draw the lines. D one, D two, D three. Okay, and mark the intersection points. So this will be P zero, this will be our P one, P two, P three, and this will be our P four. So after marking these points, apply the same method in this quadrant also. So divide this length into four equal number of divisions, and this length into four equal number of divisions. Now connect this point to point C and draw the lines C1, C2, C3, and connect this point to D and draw lines D1, D2, D3, and mark the intersection point P5, P6, P7. This will be our P A, and draw the free hand curves passing through this point. Draw the free hand curve passing through this point. This will be an ellipse. Right now, this is half ellipse. Now we have to apply the same method below. But if we doesn't want to apply the same method below, what we have to do to draw the ellipse in the second part? So for that, draw lines parallel to minor axis from P one, P two, P three. and after drawing the lines measure this length from the intersection point to major axis to p1 measure this length and mark the point p1 dash at the same point same length measure this length and mark p2 dash at the same length measure this length and mark p3 dash at same length okay apply the same over here also you will get p5 dash p6 dash p7 dash and connect this point you will get the Ellipse. So this is an ellipse with rectangle or oblong method. Now let's move on to next method, ellipse in parallelogram. So construct an ellipse in parallelogram, 125 mm and 90 mm sides. Take included angle of the parallelogram as 120 degree and 60 degree. Draw major axis and minor axis of an ellipse. So right now 120 mm and 90 mm. Sides are more the major axis and minor axis. So first of all, draw the parallelogram having side length 125 mm and 90 mm, and included angle as 120 degree and 60 degree. So draw the parallelogram and side length 125, 90, and included angle 60 and 120 degree. 
and after drawing the parallelogram now mark the midpoint of each side of the parallelogram so mark the midpoint of each side of the parallelogram connect this side ab and connect this side which is cd this side will be parallel to the longer side of the parallelogram and this side will be parallel to the shorter side of the parallelogram mark the center also intersection point of cd and ab after drawing these lines now apply the same method that we have applied in the rectangle pattern that means divide this line into equal number of divisions so divide it let us say that divide it into four equal parts 0 1 2 3 and 4 and as we have divided this line into four equal parts now divide this length into four equal parts also and connect these points to point c and this point to d and draw the lines and mark the intersection points p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 apply the same method in this quadrant also divide this line into four equal parts and this line into four equal parts connect this point to point c and connect this point to point d and mark the intersection points as p5 p6 p7 and p8 and draw the free end curve passing through these points will be an ellipse but right now we have drawn the half ellipse now we have to apply the same method to draw the other half of the ellipse but if we doesn't want to apply the same method what we have to do so we have to draw lines parallel to cd from p1 p2 p3 and measure this length from this point to p1 and mark the p1 dash at the same length below measure this length p2 and mark the same length below to get p2 dash measure this length p3 and mark the same length to get p3 dash and apply the same method over here you will get p5 dash p6 dash and p7 dash and connect these points to get the ellipse so this is the ellipse in the parallelogram but as we have said that ab and cd are not the major axis and minor axis we have to draw the major axis or we have to find the major axis and minor axis so how can we find it so for that take a rounder put your rounder at o that means as o as center and radius is equal to o to c as o as center radius is equal to o to c draw a circle or draw an arc and mark the intersection point of this arc on the curve so mark, mark this point this is c1 connect c to c sorry connect c1 to c and now draw line parallel to c c1 from center o what we have to do we have to draw a line parallel to c c1 from center o so draw a line parallel to c c1 from o and this line will give us the minor axis minor axis of the ellipse so this line will be the minor axis of the ellipse and the line perpendicular to this line and passing from point o will be the major axis so these are the minor axis and major axis of an ellipse now let's move on to next method ellipse by arc of circle matter so draw an ellipse having major axis 120 mm and minor axis 80 mm use arc of the circle method also draw normal and tangent at any point as on the curve so the given data is major axis ab 120 mm minor axis cd 80 mm so first of all draw a major axis ab having length 120 mm minor axis cd 80 mm make sure that major axis and minor axis should be perpendicular bisector of each other so the length of major axis is 120 and length of minor axis is 80 mm so after drawing the major axis and minor axis we have to find out the focus point of an, of an ellipse for that measure the distance of o to a or o to b on the rounder which is half length of the major axis and from c or d as a center give an arc on the major axis so from c as center give an arc on the major axis major axis having length is equal to half of the major axis and mark points which are focus point f1 and f2 focus points are also known as the fixed points now mark the points and as we know that the length of cf1 is equal to cf2 is equal to oa is equal to ob and it is equal to 1 by 2 into major axis 
so after defining the focus point now make divisions in between f1 o and f2 o and you can make the divisions randomly it is not required to divide it into equal number of divisions so mark divisions in between f1 to o and f2 to o and give the numbering 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and after marking these points now measure a to one distance on the round and give an arc from the focus point f1 on both side of the measure axis then after measure b to one on the round and give an arc from the focus point f2 you will get this intersection point and this intersection point now apply the same for second point measure a to 2 distance on the rounder give an arc from the focus point f1 on both side of the measure axis measure b to 2 on the rounder and give an arc from the focus point f2 you will get this intersection point and this intersection point apply it for third point also measure a to 3 on the rounder from focus point f1 give an arc both side measure b to 3 on the rounder give an arc from focus point f2 on both side you will get the intersection points Measure A to 4 on the rounder, give an arc from focus point F1 on both sides of the measure axis. B to 4 on the rounder, give an arc from focus point F2 on both sides of the measure axis. Mark these points P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P1 dash, P2 dash, P3 dash, P4 dash. And draw the free hand curve passing through these points will be an ellipse. So this is again a half ellipse. Now we have to apply the same method on this side also. So for that what we have to do? We have to measure A to 5 on the rounder and we have to give an arc from focus point F1. We have to measure B to 5 on the rounder and we have to give an arc from focus point F2 on both sides of the measure axis. So you have to apply this for 5, 6, 7, 8 also. So you will get these points, these points as the intersection points of the arc. Mark these points and draw the free end curve passing through these points. You will get an ellipse with arc of the circle method. Now we have to draw a normal and tangent to the curve. So first of all, we have to mark this point at anywhere on the curve. Let us say that mark this point at on the curve over here as now connect this point as to F1, F2. Now we have to draw a bisector of this angle F1 as F2. And that bisector of this angle will be a normal to the curve and a line perpendicular to the normal and passing from point S will be the tangent to the curve. So this will be an ellipse with arc of the circle method. Here we have represented the definition of the ellipse that we have discussed in the last lecture. So what is that definition? Ellipse is a curve traced out by a point moving in a plane such that the sum of its distances from the fixed points will remain constant. So here in this figure we can say that F1 and F2 are the fixed points and all these points P1, P2, P3 are the moving points. So take any one point. So F1, P1 plus F2, P2 is equal to F1, P2, F2, P2 and it is equal to major axis. So here you can see that F1, P1 is equal to 1, 2, A that means 1, 2, A and f2 p1 is equal to 1 to b so 1 to b and 1 to a plus 1 to b is equal to major axis so the summation will be equal to major axis and it will remain constant for each point on the curve so this is it for today thank you for watching in our next lecture we will come with some more methods of ellipse and then after we will start parabola and hyperbola in our next lecture Till then, take care.